Six Southwick students are facing charges that range from interference with civil rights, threat to commit a crime, and witness interference. With this, I intend to be very clear. Hatred and racism have no place in this community. And where this behavior becomes criminal, I will ensure that we act and act with swift resolve, as we did here, to uncover it and bring it to the light of justice. It's so funny when these white guys virtue signal, acting like they've never said the N-word before in their lives. Every white person has said the N-word before, okay? It's just not on video. Some of them are, some of them, <laughs> some, some incidents are, some of them aren't. But every, that dude has definitely said the N-word at least five times. I guarantee it. Cancel them too. The students involved were between the ages of 13 and 14, and their families have all been notified of the charges against them. Due to legal restrictions, D.A. Galuni was not able to divulge the identities of the individuals to the public. The investigation revealed that these six students uttered hateful and racist remarks, including notions of violence towards people of color, racial slurs, derogatory photos and videos, and an online slave auction. Yeah, so I don't know where the fuck freedom of speech is anymore. Like, what the hell happened to that? Now we're going after eighth graders for making jokes on Snapchat, edgy jokes. I'm pretty sure The Office has said much worse, like The Office, the TV show. They've said, like, way edgier and way more offensive jokes than that. I've never seen the post, so I don't know how offensive it is. I'm sure it's very offensive. If anything, they should just be expelled or suspended. They're 13-year-old boys. They're going to make mistakes. They don't, they don't subscribe. I doubt they subscribe to any political values. They, they're probably not aware about political correctness and how it's absolutely infected every single state, government, institution. So I really don't blame them. Criminal charges, that's fucking overboard and ridiculous. Prior to these charges, the students involved were suspended from school. On Thursday, February 15th, and Friday, February 16th, several students were formally suspended by the Southwick school system. Most notably, two students were suspended for 25 days and one student for a period of 45 days. Eighth graders are not in touch with political, correct political correctness. They don't care. Do you guys remember when blackface was like kind of normal back in like the early 2000s, mid 2000s? Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon, one of the douchebag Jimmys, was caught doing full black body impersonating a black basketball player. So, like, all this shit changes. I guarantee in 10 to 15 years, tanning is going to be considered a blackface. It just gets more and more absurd. Allison Lopez and her 13-year-old daughter have been at the center of this investigation after her daughter experienced racist harassment firsthand from these students. In a statement to 22 News, Lopez said in part, quote, Your dedication to upholding justice in our community is commendable and provides a glimmer of hope amidst the darkness of this traumatic incident. Matt Walsh actually made a really good point in his most recent video today. He said that we treat actual criminals like they are just kids making mischief, and then we treat kids making mischief like they're actual criminals. For example, a violent criminal was released from jail multiple times or released from police custody multiple times because of the bail statue in New York City currently, and he ended up pushing a girl, his girlfriend, onto the subway tracks and her feet got amputated. And this guy was originally charged with attempted murder of a child and attempted murder of an adult female. And he was like, oh, that is ridiculous. And that's what happens when you treat criminals like children and children like criminals. It's so funny. Well, actually, it's not really funny. The United States has the highest prison population out of any nation besides China. They don't report their actual numbers. But we still don't have enough because we are extremely, extremely lax on, on criminals. I don't feel safe walking through the hood, walking through the ghetto in America. And that's unfortunate, going through Chirac. It's like a war zone out there sometimes. I don't feel safe at all 
hear gunshots at night. It's not fun. We really do need to throw the book at criminals, gang leaders, gangs, drug traffickers. We're going to do what El Salvador just did. Clean the streets up completely. And everyone will live a happier life. People will be more successful, richer, happier, more relaxed. I don't know why we can't do what El Salvador did. That president has an 80% approval rating. El Salvador is probably safer than America at this point. Safest country in the Western Hemisphere, I heard. Besides probably pussy-ass Canada. Canada. 